Welcome to Punching Above Your Weight. This is a podcast that tells the story of people overcoming adversity to reach their goal. We're all told that losing weight is impossible. Well, join me as I learn from the people who have proved that theory wrong. I hope you enjoy. All right, welcome back to episode 13 of Punching Above Your Weight. And today I have with me Chandler Sims, who's in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, And Chandler has another amazing story of, of his journey of weight loss over the last few years. So Chandler, what I normally do here is I normally hand it over to you just to give the listeners some sort of background of, you know, what, firstly, what you've been through, you know, to get to the, the peak of your weight, you know, what, what were the events that led you there? And, and, and then, you know, what was that trigger for you that, you know, you, it was just the catalyst where things had to change and you've turned it to the point where you are now? Um, cool. Uh, for stars. Hi. <laughs> hi, everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I would you know, my, you know, growing up, like my, my parents were terrific. Like my, my family, I have a very stable home life and stuff. And, you know, I played soccer for almost 15 years and I played all throughout high school. So I had, like, I had a foundation of, you know, of like, like a healthy way and then, you know, eating healthy and stuff. So like, it wasn't until after I had graduated, um, I had, Cause, you know, I'm a person that thrives in like a structure and a routine. And, you know, after high school, I was a, a freshman in college and it was like, I have all this freedom and it's like, I can essentially do whatever I want. And it's like, you know, of course I indulged in like, you know, partying and, you know, eating whatever I wanted. Cause you know, I was 18 and it was, it was fine. And, you know, I'm also, um, six, six. <laughs> so, yeah. um, So for a lot of um, my like teenage years, even when I was kind of starting to gain weight at the very end of high school, it was kind of like, oh, you know, you're tall. Like it's like, it'll even out eventually, like it's fine. So that was kind of my like crutch. And it was like that, I carried that for the longest time. And then, you know, I think, you know, um, I also had a lot of like mental health stuff going on. Like I was going through like an awful breakup at the time and, you know, that never helps anything. (laughs) Not at all. Yeah. And, you know, I, um, it it, it was almost like I gained weight so fast and it was like, I think when, you know, I think the trigger that really kind of like jump started my new lifestyle was that, you know, my, my doctor was like, you, my doctor was like, you will be diabetic. Like he was like, that was, he's like, that's like, you know, my, um, my grandmother was was like very uh, blah. She, she was type one and you know I remember always seeing her like prick her finger and I remember thinking like that is not something like I, I want for myself so I think you know it was that like I'm on the cusp of like something else changing my life and not in a positive way so it's either I change my life or I accept a whole new one you know what I mean and yeah right so I think that's really, really what it was for sure. So, yeah, like I, I actually look into like the, the research and motivation a lot, Chandler, and, and you know, like you, you talked about the breakup that you went through and, and you sort of gained a lot of weight there. So I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming, you know, food was a bit of a coping mechanism for you yes. during that time. Oh, yeah, for sure. And so mate, with, with motivation, like we, you know, the, the crux of pretty much all motivation is that we're moving away from pain and towards pleasure. So in that situation, it was quite painful for you. And food is a very good coping mechanism. It takes you away from pain temporarily and into pleasure. But you got mm-hmm. to that point where the, 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 the pain of being the weight that you were. Now, the weight I've got here is you, you peaked at 335 pounds, which, you know, for our metric listeners, that's uh, 152 <laughs> kg. So you, you peaked at that. But you are you said 6'6". Six, six, so... Yeah. Uh, again, for the metrics, I think we're, that's sitting at around nearly 195 centimeters or something like that. Like it's quite tall. Um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. I'm a tall guy. <laughs> yes. So, you, so you peaked at that, but it was that that now that catalyst of moving away from the pain of potentially being diabetic to mm-hmm. I just need to change something. So, at w- what age were you then when this happened? I was. I was around, or no, I think I was 19. 
because okay. I because I remember um, when I turned twenty, I um, I I was and you know my like style and everything changed as of as of I've, I've you know lost weight. So like I just I remember my twentieth birthday being like a like a really big moment just because like I was really confident in that one night just by like whatever outfit I had on you know and it was just yeah. like you know I considered that you know a a, a, a milestone <laughs> I guess yeah, right. so you, you'd lost weight by then are you saying like at your 20th mm-hmm. birthday yeah right and so this was, was it was yeah <laughs> you, you were saying so um when i was talking to you previously you were saying that it was 2017 is when the journey started so this is like a year later yeah did, did you lose a lot of weight in that first year given that you you know you're saying at your 20th birthday you were feeling quite confident um i want to say because i remember when i first started i didn't i didn't i didn't really know much about the gym like i was really i mean i had been you know a few a few times and you know I kind of dabbled in the machines and stuff but like I really just went um to the gym and just walked on the treadmill every day for 30 minutes and I did that for like a month and like a month and a half and like the weight really did just like like I lost like maybe 25 to 30 pounds just from doing that and that was yeah yeah because I was going from such a drastic like no physical activity to just like my body was probably going going in crazy <laughs> crazy mode for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And so you like like we're now what three years, three and a half years later. Mm-hmm. And so to so tell us, you know, like you, the walking got you started. What else were you doing in that time? To to your current weight, you said was about three uh, two thirty five, two forty is where you float between now. Which yeah, again for our metrics, we're talking about um, <laughs> sort of one one hundred six, one hundred eight kg. Uh, but mm-hmm. you, you said your goal now is to actually put on some weight because you're looking to really change body composition and with the muscle. Yes. So so it's been a, a good three and a half year journey. Tell us, you know. Uh, outside that first year how did it all go (laughs) probably I I will say the first year was probably the hardest just because I because you know I always I like to view it as you know diets and stuff or or whatever like the new fads are or like keto or anything like that And, and you know I've never I've never really tried keto it's like I've read into it but that was never my my main thing but um you know, I didn't just want to do something for a short time frame. Like I wanted this to be like my entire life. Like I wanted this to carry on forever. So I figured that was the best mindset just because that was more of like a long term than, than, than a, like a, blah, than a short term. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) yeah. um, Mate, I love that. um, I, I, I talk to clients, my clients all the time about this is like, there's there's kind of two people that I mostly two people that I tend to see will lose weight from you know from a more long term perspective okay and it's it's the mental switch upstairs so there's people that have weight loss surgery now they can lose it long term but there's also a lot of people that will put that weight back on if they haven't still mm-hmm. dealt with upstairs but then there's the other people where they just flick a switch you know it's and it's upstairs and I kind of describe it it's a bit like you can approach weight loss as a sprint or a marathon mm-hmm. you know now now I, i'm specifically talking about the mental approach to weight loss because you can yeah. approach it like a marathon and still get results quite fast that's not the problem it's it's that if you approach it like a sprint mentally it's like you feel like you've got to get it all off and then once the race is yeah. finished you stop and and that's just not how it works it's a marathon it's like a really it's a marathon that never ends because you know, yeah, you, it really it's a it's a daily. I think it's like a daily battle. It really is. Mm-hmm. Like I, I mean there there. I mean there are days where I'm like oh, I really want, like like just some type of fast food. And it's like, but then it's like, I, I don't really want that. It's like it's just that would only satisfy me for a minute, <laughs> like yeah. maybe like ten minutes. And it's like once that's gone or once that's over, it would just be, you know, I wouldn't per se like regret it because you know I, I do enjoy fast food I still like to ind- indulge in stuff and stuff like that and it's not like a all the time thing but like you know once once every two weeks or so like 
I have no problem going to McDonald's or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, yeah. it's realistic, isn't it? You know, like it's... Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I um, like, again, I'm telling my clients all the time, it's it's cheap meals aren't a problem, but cheap days or meals that yeah. lead into days are the problem because, you know, if we're talking um, like in calories, like a kilo of body fat is worth somewhere in the ballpark of about 7,000 calories. So about 30,000 kilojoules. Now, early on in weight loss, that measures up. There's a few other things that come into it with the way the body defends the fat level. But, but you know, it's still useful to have that number in your mind because then when you go and eat some fast food once a fortnight, like you say, you realize, well, hang on, this meal doesn't have 7,000 calories in it. I'm not going to yeah. put a kilo of body fat on with this one meal but I will if I'm eating this continuously, you know. Now, you can eat that one meal and because of the the sodium in it and sometimes the carb, if you've been low carb, that can hold on to water, which will then Mm -hmm. on the scales make it look like you've put on a kilo, but it's actually not the body fat component. So it's an important concept to understand because I, I, I see people that they feel this all or none approach is all they've got. You know, I've got to be perfect all the time and it's just not a sustainable mental approach to Mm -hmm. it. It's really that sprint mentality, isn't it? It's that it's that you know you kind of have to give a little and then take a little too it's like you can't mm. live perfectly every day you know <laughs> impossible it's I, impossible I, i'm big on analogies channel so like i like because i'm a bit of a slow learner i think so i'd like to visualize things differently but i, I, I like in weight loss a bit to like an investment strategy you know like sometimes mm-hmm. you've got to spend money to earn money you know to make oh money. yeah you know, there'll be times where you spend more than what you actually save, but you know, as long as you're putting away or saving more money over the long term, mm-hmm. you, you, you're going to end up in front, aren't you? Oh yeah, it's it's a it's a constant. Like it's like I have to I like to you know plan my stuff ahead because then it's like you know I like you know I like a structure and I like a routine. Yes. And, you know, so when I do, you know, make like me, my like food and stuff, I will make it not like make it days before, but I'll have like the initial plan. It's like, okay, Monday night, this is what I'm having after work. Like Tuesday night, I'm not going to be able to eat at dinner because I'm working late. So I'll probably just take something to work and then yeah. I'll sort it out there. And I, love you know, that. I have to have to make it work. <laughs> well, the real benefit, we, we actually, um, we've got a, like a sort of couple, well, private members, Facebook group. And the thing that we work on is planning because I mean, what, what it knocks out, like it, it's, it's part of our system is that we, it, we plan every Thursday night. We just sit down and plan out our week because the point is you, you, you you're kind of eliminating hunger from the decision-making process, aren't you? You know, like mm-hmm. if, if you come home of a night time and you haven't got a plan, and you're thinking what to eat for dinner and then your hunger hormones are up, then then your choices are more vulnerable to them, you know, the quick, easy, oh, yeah. not so healthy meals. Whereas the planning helps to override that. Like, you you know, it saves you calories. It saves you time, I find as well. And I mean, it can even save like, saves us money because, you know, oh, like, yeah. we're no different to anyone. If, if our fridge or um, pantry's empty, we're, we're more vulnerable to go and get takeaway that night. You know, and mm. like we we got four kids, so takeaway is not cheap. So <laughs> the, the planning helps. So yeah, mate, I love hearing that. It's fantastic. <laughs> if a lot of the information in these podcasts are resonating with you, you can learn more by grabbing a copy of the Tweaking Diet. This is available at Amazon and at scood.com.au. Thanks. So it's. No, 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 sorry, go ahead. <laughs> well, what I, what I was going to ask Chandler is from, you know, back at the, the 335 pounds compared to where you are now, like if you can describe for us just the, the difference in your day, like if you can remember back to being that weight, what it felt like, you know, and then, you know, like, like if we can visualize it, let's say today you're 335 pounds, how's the day? And then all of a sudden you wake up tomorrow and you're currently the 235 just what's the contrast between those days? Um, I would have to say my mental would be very different. Like I'm, like I'm an, I feel like I'm in a, I'm a whole different person from who I was three years ago. So that's like a, not almost like a night and day just because, yeah, right. um, like, you know, I work at a gym and, you know, I, you know, I never even thought I would do something like that. <laughs> like wow. three years ago, I never thought, you know, I was a completely different major. I was a completely different 
I had different friends, like I had a different style, like I was a completely different person. So it's like whenever I see pictures of myself when I was 335, it's almost like I really don't know who that is. <laughs> like, wow, yeah. Like wow. I like it's it because losing weight, it just kind of it brought out much more confidence and I have much more, you know, ability. Like I feel like, you know, my whole depth is is much deeper. Like I feel like I, I think a lot deeper about things and you know weight loss has really helped me mentally for sure like it's helped me you know uh, yeah <laughs> it's, that's great it's, i was gonna say because i've also i've also been in therapy for four years because you know i have my fair share of anxieties and yeah you know i you know i have you know body dysmorphia and stuff so like there are days where you know i'll look in the mirror and it's like I'm not perfect, but I'm grateful for for where I am right now, just because this is where I wanted to be. Like this is what yeah. I want. I worked for, you know. So it's like I need to be. I have to like remember. It's like this is where I wanted. <laughs> like this is what I wanted. <laughs> Mate, it's a real balance, isn't it? You know, like it I, really is. I, I'm a big believer that, um, like, uh, you know, human beings, because we're a species that have evolved for millions of years we are never happy with where we are because of that inbuilt desire to evolve. It's, it's, it's not, you know, like it's almost like we're always trying to improve, but you really need to balance that because it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I look at where you've come from to where you are now. And, mm -hmm. you know, like it, you do need to put the handbrake on it certainly at times, don't you? Because, um, you know, it can become unhealthy, like you're aware, but, um, yeah. You know, looking, uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll share the images of your before and after. No, yeah, um, of course. <laughs> mate, like, yeah, it's two different people completely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay, so sorry, I did interrupt before, mate. So the planning is a big part of what you do now. Can you give the listeners some, some more, I guess, pearls of wisdom for what you do now just to, to keep in both the mental state that you're in, but just the... the, the um, state of health that you're in as well yeah um so my so after okay because because i remember i said earlier that i that i only walked for the first couple of months and that was and, you know eventually i hit my first plateau and then you know i was like okay where do i go from here so then i started doing more uh a street training and i started you know doing more machines and you know that just kind of i just kept kind of building on that and then eventually you know, I worked my way up to going to the free weights because that was such a like anxiety inducing place, like the free weights, like at the gym. And that's, you know, I'm sure a lot of people like relate to that because it's like, when you go to the free weights, you see a bunch of like huge guys that are like bench pressing 400, 400 pounds. And it's like, okay, <laughs> like, that's a lot to do. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, you know, I had to kind of work my way up to, I guess, the totem pole I would say like it was kind of like I had to you know, work my way up to that and now it's kind of when I do go to the gym um I'm only at the free weights and I'm only I think that's that's where I that's I, that's where I prefer to be and that's like where I can get all my stuff done and you know yeah. also the gym is a very social thing for me also because it's like you know yeah. I've had my little gym community and my friends and my like support system and it's like that's like that's my world over there. You it's know? interesting that you say that. Actually, I, I interviewed a lady um, who I, I mentioned to you, Mary Prennan, who wrote a book yeah. called um, "I'm Lazy and I Love to Eat." And a big part of it's like she tried so many exercise routines over the years, and a big part of what clicked for her was the social connection at her gym. She just fell in with a, a nice group of people, and she just oh, enjoyed yeah. going there. I was like, I um I try to go well, I try to go every morning at five if, or five a.m. if I'm able just because you know I love the morning crowd and you know it's yeah. you know I see the same people every morning and it's like you know that's how I that's like the first thing I do in the in, for my day so it's you know it it starts my day and it's it's really, it. and I really like that it's just you know and the people I meet you know they'll you know, help me work out, you know, I'll help them and, you know, they'll show me new workouts and it's like, you know, it's just really enriching. It's really, it keeps it fresh. That's great. You know, it's like, it? yes, it really is. Cause I mean, sometimes you can get bored doing the same routine every, every week. And it's like, of course, you know, I mean, we're humans, like, you know, we have to adapt or, you know, 
stay in this rhythm and you know i like to sw switch it up and keep it fresh <laughs> yeah no I, I i love that and you know it's great like that you found that that i guess home almost at a gym because they they can be well the perception is they can be an intimidating place um mm. particularly if you're walking in there at 335 pounds like you did um yeah that, that can be off-putting to a lot of people but you know your experience is um i guess polar opposites isn't it like you've really found yes that for sure like i i started you know it, even like the, the clothes i was wearing to the gym like are polar opposites like now i used to wear like t-shirts and like really long gym shorts and now i wear shorts that are like three inches <laughs> and now it's yeah, like yeah yeah right. <laughs> great now it's like now i'm a little more like i don't want to say like show offy but now i'm like a much more comfortable like showing off my arms and my shoulders and yeah, like my legs proud, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm definitely proud for sure. Like I, yeah. like I'm, I'm really grateful that I'm able to be in the position that I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've worked hard for it, you know, like you've, you've mm -hmm. come a long way. So that's fantastic. Well, Chandler, thank you so much for your time today, mate. It's been, uh, it's been great chatting to you. I um, might get you to finish with one piece of health advice. Okay. So if you could only give one piece of health advice, to anyone listening to that, what would be your number one, you know, pearl of wisdom to, to, to pass on? Um, I would say I just do it. Like it really is like, you know, it's so hard to, or no, 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 I'm sorry. It's so easy to, you know, there, there's always a thousand reasons not to do something, but you only need one to do it. Like you, like, I wanted to lose weight for so long. And then finally I was just like, enough is enough. And then I just, I just started and now it's like, I never see myself stopping. So now it's kind of, yeah. it's like, if you want to join a gym, if you want to go to the gym, go like it's in. Yeah. I would just, just Love do it. it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, that's right. And, and actually Mary, the lady I was talking to about, she, she had a, a similar uh, advice and it was basically don't overthink it you know she, yeah. she she was chasing all all of these different you know cures if you like or sort of quick fixes and and in the end she you know just thought i just it's simple i just need to actually put one foot in front of the other and start doing it and that's what she did mm -hmm. just like yourself yeah <laughs> all right mate well yeah thanks again and uh yeah no doubt that you know people listening to this will have derived a lot from your your experience so thanks very much no, of course. I mean, thank you for having me. Thanks for listening. I hope you learned something from this podcast. Please subscribe. And if you have your own story to tell, please email us at hello at scood.co. Thanks.